What's up guys, welcome to another First Shots video. Today we're gonna to be shooting the Comrade 12 from Kalashnikov USA. So this is a really cool firearm. It's basically a short barrel clone of a Russian Sega 12, which if you're not familiar, is essentially an AK-47 style firearm designed to shoot 12 gauge shotgun shells. This gun has a 12 and a half inch barrel with an overall length over 26 inches with a pistol brace, which according to current US law makes this not a pistol or a shotgun, but is actually just classified as a firearm. So all legally aside, this is a really cool magazine fed firearm chambered in 12 gauge shotgun shells, capable of firing both two and three quarter inch or three inch shotgun shells. So I did a lot of research on this gun before picking it up and as cool as it looks, I was originally not interested because it supposedly required really powerful rounds to be able to cycle. But in my research, I found that Carolina Shooter Supply makes a light load reliability kit for the Sega 12 that supposedly works pretty well in the Comrade, allowing it to fire lighter and less expensive loads, which really piqued my interest. So I picked this up recently and I've already installed the reliability kit, which is just a new spring adjustable gas block and gas puck. So we're gonna run it today and see how it does with various loads. Ideally, we'll be able to use the six position adjustable gas block to fine tune the gas system to be able to run various high and low powered loads reliably without beating up the internals of the gun. So I really haven't added much to this gun otherwise. It comes with the SBA3 brace and the IMI Defense vertical grip. I did swap in this TDI pistol grip because it came with a rubber oval mold grip with finger grooves and I've just really never been a fan of those. I'm just going to run it with the irons for today, see how we do with those. It's basically a front bead with a pistol style rear sight. And lastly, I did add a KUSA muzzle brake with breaching spikes. I think it looks cool and honestly a short barreled 12 gauge firearm has a tendency have a pretty big kick, so I want to see how effective this would be. It looks very similar to a 74 style break, so aesthetically, I'm definitely a fan of it. As for the ammo we're testing today, we've got a few different options. Got some bio ammo number eight birdshot going 1312 feet per second, some bio ammo number nine birdshot going 1312 feet per second, but with a heavier shot load. Got some Lambro Guard buckshot going 1325 feet per second, and then we've got this Winchester number eight heavy target load going only 1200 feet per second. I've seen videos of the Comrade running ammo similar to this pretty reliably with this kit, but I'm not too optimistic, so we'll see how that goes. All right, well, that's enough talking. Let's get it to the range and see how it performs with the light load reliability kit installed. All right, so we're going to start out with some of that number eight bio ammo. This is high brass going about 1,312 feet per second. Uh, but I am starting on the lowest gas setting, which is actually setting six. A little bit confusing, but that's what it is. Let's see if it cycles. Not quite. All right, so now I got five shots of the number nine bird shot from BioAmmo. This is again going at 1,312 feet per second. I am on the lowest gas setting, which is setting six. Let's see if it cycles. Four out of five. All right, we got three shots of that Winchester bird shot, number eight going about 1200 feet per second. I would be ecstatic if this stuff cycled, but I have not such a good feeling about it considering how the bio ammo did. So we'll see. Yeah, that's a no, unfortunately. All right, so I got three rounds of Lambro Double Odd Buck going 1,325 peak per second. Got the gas setting at setting four, which is supposed to work for Buckshot, but 
We'll see. The first two. It, uh, whoa. It really schmussed up that round trying to get it loaded. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's really deformed. I'm not sure I'll be able to get that to chamber. All right. All right, I got three more of that double lot buck from Lambro. Uh, we're now on setting five instead of four. See how that does. All right. Well, that worked. Some more of that number nine bird shot. Sometimes it's crushing these buckshot rounds, I don't know why. Yeah, that one got me. keeps happening in these rounds guys it's pretty annoying
Last five rounds of the day. Buckshot. See if we can go out with a bang. All right, guys, this gun is a lot of fun. I do have some reservations though, so let's talk about it a little bit. So, I mean, performance-wise, even with the reliability kit, the gun struggled to cycle a lot of the rounds. It seemed to do best with the number nine bio ammo and then the Lambro Guard buckshot. However, the buckshot did have some weird failures to feed where it was just like smushing the rounds and uh and and just really having trouble feeding them so that was kind of annoying not really sure what was going on with that the number nine birdshot bio ammo seemed to cycle pretty well on setting six which is letting the most gas into the system but what was interesting is the lambro guard buckshot was cycling pretty well on five but then it was still having some issues so i put it to setting six which is the same as the birdshot and it cycled about the same so that was a little disappointing i was really hoping that the adjustable gas block would make more of a difference but ultimately it seems that it just wants to be fully open all the time, which is a little bit disappointing and kind of defeats the purpose a little bit, but at least it did run the majority of the things that I had. I did have more rounds fire than fail, which certainly not a good barometer, but when it comes to a gun like this, I definitely look at this as purely a range toy. I would definitely not consider this gun reliable enough to be used as home defense or for any sort of serious duty use, but it is when it's running. Honestly, it's a ton of fun. You know, even though it's fairly light, the recoil really was not that bad with this one. I definitely had a lot of fun running it. I may have had some issues with some of the magazines, but it was hard to tell if the feeding issues were from the magazines or from the gas system. Sometimes when dropping the bolt on a fresh mag, it would have trouble loading the first round, which was a little bit annoying. And you know, I really wish that the gun could run a little bit more like an AK where you could load it on a closed bolt and then rack the slide. I really enjoy the visceral feel of that, but that's just kind of not how Segas work to begin with. Although I know a traditional Sega would have a bolt hold open latch which would make things a lot easier this does not and so the way that you have to do this is you have to use this bolt hold open latch in the safety which is a little bit finicky and definitely not very fun to operate it like that but it does work so that's all right i think the muzzle brake worked really well in terms of taming the recoil it's put on there with a jam nut and it didn't seem to move so it seems like the install on that went well ergonomically the gun feels really good the bead sight works well not a big fan of the sba3 brace but the gun doesn't run well enough that i would consider or making it a short barrel shotgun, so I think we'll just leave it as is. One thing that was kind of disappointing here is they did put some QD slots on either side of the brace mount, which is great. I love it when companies do that. Unfortunately, my Savvy Sniper sling just pops right out of there. Uh, and I tried a few different uh, uh, QD point adapters and they just slide right out. So that was pretty disappointing. Fortunately, the one on the SBA3 brace does lock in just fine. So I was just using that and no real big issue there. Another thing worth noting is early on, I was having a lot more trouble cycling than I did later. So it's possible that there's a break-in going on with the components. So, you know, I'll keep monitoring it and, uh, you know, we'll see if it does get better over time. One thing that I did do early on because I was having issues with cycling, I did swap out the Carolina Shooter Supply gas puck and put the stock one back in. I've heard that some people have issues with the gas puck from the reliability kit and they prefer to use the stock one. So I swapped that back in and then ran the rest of the session like that. I don't know if that had a factor or not. The magazines from KUSA are really easy to load. I do like that. The Pro Mag drum mag actually worked quite well. It, uh, it cycled very well. I don't think I actually had any failures while running this magazine. So uh, that was really nice to see. That's about all I got for today on this one, guys. It's a fun gun. It's a range toy. It's not going to run reliably 100% of the time, even if you have a reliability kit. And it will be dependent on ammo. So maybe I could get some ammo that would run better in it but at this point what i would say is it's a fun gun i look forward to shooting it some more again i wouldn't recommend it for home defense but if it's something that you're interested in just from a cool factor or from a range toy perspective i'd say it's worth maybe checking out just keep in mind that you're probably going to have to buy some more expensive ammo that runs hotter to run it properly whether you get the reliability kit or not so that's all we got for today guys we got a lot more videos coming soon including more range days and first shots videos so remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned and thanks for stopping by